Yeah, Global Connections, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the surge of COVID in India uh, with our friend, Dr. Rupmati Kandakar, who wrote a book about it. Hi, hi Rupmati. And there's the book, Raging COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, and you call it the Wuhan Conspiracy. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, Rupmati. Good evening, Jay, and um, again, a pleasure, and it's been almost two years that we are having this series on the pandemic. Yeah. So amazing. Well, you know, we think that, uh, you know, it's a national issue. I guess the news is, always seems to be national, what the, what the government is doing and how the cases are surging in this area or not. And, and we get these maps uh, showing what state has what and what state doesn't have what, and we hear the stories, we hear the stories in the news, and we hear the stories from our friends, you know, and it never a day goes by when a friend of mine doesn't come down with COVID, and it seems to be increasing here in Hawaii and elsewhere on the mainland. Um, but we don't think of, of the global picture, and that's why we want to talk to you. Uh, we don't think of how it's surging in other places, and not only within national boundaries, but, uh, you know, outside of national boundaries. And uh, India was in the news a couple of days ago about how it was surging in India. And I recall um, a year, a year and a half ago, India had a terrible surge and people were dying all over the place and uh, nobody could seem to do anything about it. We know uh, one person who's uh, connected with Think Tech who's in uh, 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 um, a city in northeast in India where, you know, his whole family died. Varanasi. His whole him, you know, and all all kinds of people all around him died, and he he had it too, but he survived because he was young and strong. Um, but you know, the, the bottom line is that India takes a huge toll on this sort of thing. And when we read that there's a surge in India, we have to be concerned that what happened before will happen again. So, can can you talk about what's happening in India right now? Right, Jay. Now, when the WHO, the World Health Organization, says that it's not over, it's like reminding the people all over the world that do not take it easy. And uh, there's a sense of uh, leniency that has come into the minds of the people when they think that uh, maybe it's okay now, maybe in my mind COVID is over and I think let's go. Now, in the previous program when we discussed, we were talking of uh, the stealth variant that had come in. And like you said, it's a mild form of uh, the theory that you put forth that maybe a mild variant will take over and uh, the world will be able to adjust or cope with it. That is exactly the situation that is happening right now. We are having the Omicron variants all over the world. What, uh, uh, you know, the havoc and the chaos that we saw um, in the beginning of Feb. Uh, last year was because of the Delta variant. Now, the Delta variant was the one which was stagnating uh, and uh, suffocating you and asking you, uh, keeping you gasping for breath, for oxygen, for uh, keeping you on ventilators. Now, the variant that is on is the Omicron variant. It's a milder form. So, it's kind of the lull before the storm or the decline or you take your pick. You know, it's um, that kind of situation. But um, we have to remember two things, Jay, that the entire world is not vaccinated. And second, the vaccines are not 100% effective. So these two uh, things are keeping uh, the entire situation in a, in a state of, uh, we don't know what's going to happen next. Now, if, if at all, if the variant changes to being something of a more dangerous one or which requires more hospitalizations, we are going to be in for trouble because right now um, the people are not in a mood to be uh, brought down again into lockdowns. They want their freedoms. They are calling it the freedoms. But mask is still necessary. Uh, just that this kind of calmness right now is only, only because of the milder Omicron variants. Even in India, we have the BA4, BO5, which is going on. Uh, but those are not requiring uh, hospitalizations. And death figures have been single digit in states um, as big as Texas. But uh, uh, just a couple of days ago, they went into two digits. That is 45 was recorded a couple of days back. But otherwise, all the states are doing fine. 
What do you think of um, what's happening with the, the lockdowns in China? Um, I'm sure you've seen, you know, uh, Xi Jinping is uh, being very draconian about it. And he's, he's locking uh, 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 whole cities of ten, tens of millions of people, uh, even when there's only a handful of cases. Um, is he overdoing it? Uh, should other countries do the same? Uh, correct, Jay. Now, uh, China has a zero COVID policy that, like we know. They do not want a single COVID uh, case in there. That's why these draconian laws. And I think that kind of control in this kind of a pandemic is kind of a little bit necessary because right now we do not have that much of testing on the scale that was happening at the beginning of the pandemic in India, in America, in Europe. People are not testing. You have self-testing uh, kits, which I don't think are that reliable. Uh, people, uh, people are trying to uh, avoid ways, uh, uh, find ways to avoid this testing. Uh, some countries have uh, lifted their travel restric uh, restrictions of COVID uh, testing. So, uh, you see, if you don't test, you don't know how many cases there are. China is testing, so they are knowing how many cases there are. They are getting scared of the number of tests. If we test and we find out a billion uh, Omicron uh, uh, cases in India, I think it will go into a panic mode. So, Omicron is being treated as a cold, cough, flu. And um, that's exactly the kind of scenario, the laxity that is happening in the system, that they are just lenient in their approach. And I don't know till when this is going to be um, uh, possible because it's a mutant virus. Like we said in the beginning, this, if this virus was natural, by this time we had to be out of uh, danger. But it's a mutant virus and it can uh, change form. And it's a very intelligent virus. Uh, the kind of immunity that it, uh, uh, immunity provided by the vaccines, it tries to overcome that. So that is the scary part. Well, you know, um, viruses mutate always. And the more people who are infected, the more likely statistically, in fact, you know, biochemically, the more likely there'll be more mutations. The more virus, the more mutations. And we have seen it. I mean, I can't even count the number of variants that we've seen over the past, uh, what, two and a half years, it just constantly mutates. And each time it's a crapshoot as to whether the new variant is going to be more deadly than the old one. So uh, as you say, um, we could have a deadly variant tomorrow and it could sweep the world day after. And uh, it's amazing how fast the BA4, BA5 have become the dominant um, viruses in, in the United States and, and possibly in the world. So, um, you know, it seems to me that we're, we're not out of this and we may ne never get out of this until we find a, a vaccine that is smart enough to catch, you know, all, all, all the variants, even variants that haven't happened yet. Is this possible, you think? Now, now, CJ, we are on the third booster dose, a fourth booster dose. And uh, um, how many booster doses can the body take? So when the booster dose goes unused in the body, uh, it will take, uh, uh, the body will react in a different way. Maybe a diabetic person will uh, react in a different way. A person with a heart ailment will react in a different way to the uh, booster dose that is coming in and staying unused. So, uh, you know, this kind of risks that are the mRNA vaccines, which some people do not, uh, are not, uh, they do not, it's not effective for them. Uh, so you don't have such a vaccine, comprehensive vaccine, which will cover all these variants. Because the variants are such that each uh, uh, individual, um, what do you say, mutation is uh, overriding the vaccination, uh, uh, what is that, scope. So we have to understand that it will need time for the body to develop this herd immunity, which had come in the beginning, uh, which was uh, advocated by uh, Boris Johnson of uh, UK. I think it did not play a good part in the COVID thing because we had mutations coming in from the lower vaccinated areas of the world. It had a global spread. So something which was happening in South Africa was affecting somebody in UK. So that's why this was a pandemic. And let's be honest, Jay, the world will not shut down for a flu. It is a, vaccine, it is a virus which kills. 
Yeah. It is a virus which has the potential to kill by its next mutation. So we have to be still on, still careful, still alert. I mean, uh, nobody's paying attention right now. They have lost uh, the concentration. Well, I mean, on that, there's so much to talk about here with you. Um, um, you know, it seems to me that uh, the United States is at least uh, substantially responsible for the uh, politicization and the divisiveness uh, on, on whether and to what extent people should take the vaccines and wear a mask. All that's very destructive. And the, and the reasons they didn't want to take vaccines, the reasons they didn't want to take uh, use masks uh, was irrational, unscientific, and, uh, and politicized. <clears throat> and as a result, correct me if I'm wrong, as a result, uh, and, and we led the way in allowing people to travel internationally. You know, oh. to take the guardrails off, and including Joe Biden did that, uh, and I'm and I'm saying, gee, that was in retrospect, that wasn't a good idea, because um, you know, it, it, had we been careful about it, we could have limited the spread early on. But Trump was not careful; he didn't understand anything about it. He wasn't; he didn't understand the meaning of the word careful, and and so then we have we have now we have we have let it become politicized, and we have let it become international. And even now, you, know, you live in New York, I was in New York not, not, not long ago, and I can tell you that uh, maybe, maybe one third of the people you see, maybe less, are wearing masks, even indoors. They, if they don't have to, a lot of them don't. The same, I was in New England, and I saw the same thing in New England. Uh, in Hawaii, I suppose it's, not, it's a little better, but not much. And so you know what, what we have is a national culture of not being concerned. And if it's not gonna kill me, uh, I won't wear a mask. But they don't realize that if you get it, and a lot of people get it, then you have more mutations, and then you have the risk of, of a much more deadly disease, and it keeps on going and going and going. Um, you know, I keep thinking, for example, to compare this with the Spanish flu epidemic, not dissimilar, between um, 1918 and 1919, uh, it, it's, it started in the U.S. Um, in, in the war. It went to Europe, and it came back worse. It came back um, as a mutation that was stronger. And uh, they called it the Spanish flu because it came back from Spain. But in fact, it was originally, de originally designed, originally happened uh, in, in the U.S. My, my point, though, is if you make it international, and you don't do anything about it, uh, then it becomes, uh, then everywhere is at risk because the more cases, the more mutations. You know? So I guess, what do you think of the American approach to this over the past two and a half years? Now, uh, in here, uh, two thirds of the population is vaccinated in the US uh, and uh, we are looking forward to the fall. Now, you know, Jay, we look forward to the fall with the flu dose, a uh, flu uh, uh, shot. So now you're gonna have the flu and the uh, uh, COVID having uh, joining and maybe we have a mutation or maybe we have, we have reactions, which are uh, some people may not be able to take the booster. And um, uh, the US has now, um, initiated a program to have the booster shots uh, taken by everybody. But you see, at the end of the day, it's about your personal hygiene and your personal mask, which people have uh, brought it down to liberty, freedom, and all these, uh, um, you know, uh, high-level uh, uh, political uh, <laughs> tenets. But it's not about that, isn't it, Jay? It's just about protecting yourself and uh, protecting others because uh, like you said, every country has a variant name after it. We have uh, so many of them coming in now. I think even people are confused as to what to take in and what not to take in. And the virus is going to keep on getting stronger till it has uh, breeding grounds for uh, mutation and uh, unvaccinated people, unmasked people, people with ailments uh, are all grounds for these unique mutations, which may may or may not trouble the world. So uh, we are in such a uncertain territory right now. Uh, and uh, China, till what time they are going to have this isolation policy and zero COVID policy. And we are having two different 
spectrum uh, parts of the spectrum the china has a no no uh, zero covid policy us is having full freedom so across the pacific you can see two different uh, scenarios and uh, the result is the same covid is still not stopping <laughs> so we have to just say that it all comes down to your personal choice and your mask is the only protection right now vaccination yeah. dose booster doses are coming in the us is procuring it from uh india from the serum institute but um, effectiveness is the key j we had discussed effectiveness to uh, in one of our programs that no matter how many booster doses you take is it effective enough if two do booster doses were not effective when a child has a vaccine it lasts them a lifetime we are having two vaccines two years so every year i think everybody takes it it's not effective Less, no, I, mean, uh, I think a lot of people I know, uh, you know, were very careful about it, and they took the the first vaccine as soon as they could. They took the first booster as soon as they could, and it was available here. And the second booster as soon as they could, which was only a few months ago, really, uh, in late in late twenty twenty one. But but you know, uh, what I'm getting is that that even with all of that, uh, the virus yeah. is is ahead of us. And and the, even with four shots like that, you're really not protected anymore. Is it true? Yes, it is absolutely uh, point on because uh, this virus is uh, far more intelligent than anybody else can because it's a, a, a species jumping virus. So uh, it can go to a, a, another species. Uh, it cannot be eliminated. You know, if you try to clean your house, there is going to be a speck of dust. And this is like um, you're cleaning the whole world. It's not possible, isn't it, Jay? So um, it's going to be. We are in for a very prolonged battle, and it has to be have a lot of patience. And you have to have an understanding that uh, COVID doesn't go away. COVID doesn't go away. It's going to have other friends coming along with the monkeypox coming in, and the other. Uh, it's a very grim situation because uh, once. We understand that any pandemic cannot be controlled with this kind of um, eight uh, billion population, and you know you have to have uh, a lot of precaution which people are not ready to take. People are thinking that it's restrictive, it's this, but I don't think so. Governments can have a, a further hand in this other than providing booster doses, other than providing uh, guidelines to people. People following it or not following is the problem, Jay. Yeah. Well, what about this new uh, vaccine that was just announced? It's supposed to come out in um, in September, I think. It's not. It hasn't been approved by the CDC just yet or the FDA, um, but it's supposed to be available in this country. And there's a there's a real question medically as to whether if you've had this is not Pfizer, it's something else. In fact, I have a I have a recollection that some of it is being produced in India right now. Um, so the question is, if I've had my my four shots, which most people I know have had, uh, at least here, um, is is it okay to switch horses? Is it okay to go to a, a brand new one on the assumption that my old ones you know, are no longer effective? So I need, a, I need to start a new regimen with a new one. And if this is a smarter vaccine, then I should go to, what do you think? Now, these are the DNA modifying vaccines, mRNA, uh, which is being procured by the US from India. They don't want the DNA uh, modifying vaccine. They want this one. So now, uh, what has happened, Jay? It's a twerk in the uh, um, uh, vaccine quality, everything. But you see, it is uh, developed. Any vaccine to develop takes 15 uh, 15 years to go into mass production chain. That is a scientific fact. 15 years to go to mass production. And we are having different, different doses being brought in every year. Annually, we are having doses bought in. And the entire process of all these vaccines has taken only two years. To find a vaccine, it takes minimum of three years and mass production requires four, 15 years. Now, when you hear that the US has procured 2.3 million doses. India has uh, sent uh, 6 million doses to uh, South Africa. You know, you, you find that this kind of mass production is not, uh, it's not effective 
because these vaccines have not been tested. Vaccines need testing, they need um, results, they need uh, research, they need uh, um, uh, modifications, and then you go into mass production. Now here is something that if it works in one person, if it works in a few people, they are thinking that it can work in a country. That is not possible, Jay. That is, uh, you know, you can take the booster shots with a little bit of precaution, because right now, if you see, only 1% of the population which has taken the previous doses are going in for the booster dose. Mm -hmm. So what do I do right now? I'm a Joe Q citizen. Um, and I am concerned because so many of my friends are coming down with this, and if they happen to be compromised, uh, it's, it's pretty risky. Even if the mutation is not necessarily lethal, um, it's certainly going to affect their health, maybe a long haul case and so forth. And, and it's with us. It's not going away, as you and I have discussed. So the question is, what, what do I do in today's world? What are you doing in today's world? What are your friends and you know, associates doing? Uh, we will take the vaccination with a bit of uh, precaution. Just let, you know, see how you react to the uh, booster doses. Take the tried and tested ones rather than the new ones. Uh, that would be uh, uh, because you have the old ones in your body system and you take a new one. We don't know where that is going to go. Uh, take your flu shot properly. Um, and uh, basically, uh, do not trivialize colds and uh, your. Uh, symptoms when you trivialize symptoms you're giving space to the uh, virus to mutate or develop small small uh, symptom take care of it you know you have to take care of yourself it's like uh, teaching you to be a bit of a bit of uh, it's bringing in a bit of selfishness in you uh, to take care of yourself rather than uh, um, letting go of things and uh, taking it on your body so that's the way to go for it Jay. booster doses Take it a, with a bit of precaution because every year a booster dose makes your body react in some way or another. So, so you say not to trivialize the symptoms. Uh, and I suppose uh, a lot of people would say, okay, I think I have a cold now. It might be, it might be COVID, but it might be a cold. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll address the symptoms, which means I go down to the drugstore and I buy what? Cold? symptomatic type cold medicine to take care of a cough or a sore throat, what have you. I rinse, I gargle, I do all those things that I would do for a cold. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, correct. You take your uh, regular uh, precautions, you take your health remedy uh, measures, which have been prescribed by your grandmom, your mom, uh, <laughs> your <laughs> natural uh, uh, medicines and everything. But trivializing it, not test test for your COVID. Uh, you know, the Omicron virus uh, mutation, like you said, is a mild one. It is not causing death. So this kind of relaxation is there. Delta was causing death. So we were in a panic mode. Now we don't know which is the next one coming in. You know, they've gotten out of names also. They're they they're like, let it be, let's have a BA, BA2, BA9. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's they're coming, it's bothered. coming. <laughs> they're not even bothering to find a good name for it. So it's that kind of uh, leniency that has stepped in. And uh, it's a pandemic. Pandemic is not over in two years. Well, <laughs> it's just... that, that takes me to my, my last area of inquiry with you, uh, Rupati. <laughs> and that is, no, it's a, it's a pandemic. We knew that early on. And, uh, the, and this country failed in so many ways. I have to say it. Whatever your politics, this country failed. It failed on Trump and it failed in the CDC officials and in, in Biden as well. Um, you know, for example, it, you know, so you don't have to wear a mask anymore. That was bad advice. I remember that. I said, why, why are they saying that? Yeah. Um, you know, th that's, it's clear that we weren't out of the woods and, and there they were telling us to relax. Bad advice. Anyway, here we are. We know it's global. We know it mutates. Uh, we know that some countries have more and some countries have less. Um, and and I, I would like to make you queen for a day, Rupmani. Some people say that you're queen every day. But today, today I want to make you queen. And you have the power, okay, uh, to speak to multiple countries. You are the, mm, the top of the line United <laughs> Nations official with, with lots of power. 
uh, what do you do here in order to save, you know, um, society and inter international global order? Because we have other threats to global order, as you know, you know, and in climate change in Ukraine and in the, uh, you know, arising of uh, autocrats, Hitler and Jan. Um, but on this one, what do you do to give us the best chance of surviving it and, and minimize the loss of life, the loss of uh, economic productivity? What do you do? CJ, uh, it's such a wonderful feeling. <laughs> but uh, still, it's, uh, it's the fact that you have to follow your basic COVID guidelines, keep your social distancing on, do not shake hands, do not hug, do not uh, keep a mask on. Uh, you have to have uh, these vaccination shots which are effective. We have to, uh, with, with a touch of precaution, take it. If you've had um, your shots, wait. Okay, but as queen, as queen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you do to make sure this happens? I mean, would you would you take the steps that Xi Jinping is taking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I remember there was this wonderful photograph of a woman in the um, 19, 1918, 1919 Spanish flu. And she, had, she was holding a sign and the sign said, wear a mask or go to jail. Uh -huh. <laughs> Real simple. <laughs> yes, really simple. I don't think it's, uh, I mean, we are, we are in such a, a terrible situation that Basic, basic uh, mask and social distancing is being linked to freedom. I mean, where are you going with these norms? Where are you going with this uh, kind of uh, um, rebellion? It's going to affect uh, person to person. The mute. <laughs> I, it's, it's so simple. But the children of today are growing up with the uh, understanding that they have to uh, bring in uh, social distancing, mask, sanitizing hands. Uh, all these are being inculcated as the way of uh, growing up. So that's a good good thing in that. They will be more prepared. I mean, hey, what about what about government? What about international? I mean, as, as time goes by, we realize um, that this is a matter for every country. And the countries have to cooperate. They have to reach a, an agreement on, on how to respond. And when, as and when they do, don't you think that ultimately, Somebody's going to have to say to the world, um, you've got to wear a mask, you've got to take the vaccine, you've got to maintain social distancing. And if you don't do that, we are going to apply sanctions against you and make you sad. Um, and, and the question is, do you, do you think that's inevitable? Because this is going to continue until we take some sort of global action, multinational action. Isn't it, isn't it so? Um, Jay, in a utopian world, 100% of the world population would have been vaccinated in the first shot and you would not have any mutations, correct? But uh, when we had pockets of unvaccinated areas all over the world, there were breeding grounds for these Omicron, for the Beta Delta, everything coming in. So uh, we had 100% uh, pan vaccination that is still not possible, isn't it? We are, we are, we are finding that governments are... Uh, as uh, lenient as the citizens, and they think that uh, it's okay to. We had the Brazilian <laughs> president uh, flaunting that he doesn't want. He was down with COVID. Still, he said, "No, no, no. I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want to get vaccinated." So you have defiance on that kind of a level. The common people. So uh, this, um, uh, I told you, in an idealistic world, we have no mutation. But when you have each person being uh, a potential ground for a next mutation. And uh, that, is, that is the problem with this uh, virus, that it spreads. And right now, the result of this virus is not dead. So we are enjoying ourselves. If it brings in something that uh, is more deadly, the symptoms and the result of this mutation is deadly, we are going to have, again, a panic mode that sets in. Inevitably, Jay, that is going to happen. That is the rule of mutations. That is the rule of the virus. Because unless it is curbed, or unless it dies down, or unless uh, it is in control, it will mutate and it will spread. Yes. Yeah. I mean, part of mutation is the spread, the spread feature, isn't it? Spread feature, that, yes. 
And, uh, you know, whether it's uh, lethal or not lethal, uh, the, it can mutate so it's more infectious. And so you see countries, uh, for example, that, that do wear masks, like, like Japan, they have a surge. Uh, yes. Because somehow masks or no masks, the, the thing is more infectious and, and comes and goes. So you have a, a combination of features working um, all to perpetuate the virus. And I think, you know, the, as you say, that's going to, that's going to continue with us for a long time. Uh, I suppose in the end, um, what you said before really counts. You know, I, I remember, um, for example, when the CDC and in its infinite lack of wisdom uh, said, you don't, you don't have to worry about yourself, was it, or the other way around? Oh yeah, you should wear a mask because you don't want to infect anyone else. Um, but it doesn't help you protect yourself, which is, that's poppycock. Uh, <laughs> in, in fact, it works both ways. If, if it's stopping the, you know, the viral particles from passing out of your mouth, it stops them from passing into your mouth. It's, it's a, it's a two-way um, infection. And um, it's just remarkable. They said, no, don't worry about um, you know, yourself, worry about, don't worry about others, worry about yourself or something. I forget how that works. Um, but, but the fact is that we all have to wear the mask all the time. And uh, I think, we, as you say, this French generation will grow up with that. And um, we, we are not going to be free of this for a long time. And so the answer, the answer is nice if we can stop it globally, but that's not likely. No. Um, there will be pockets of people that aren't vaccinated and that where it flares up and they will in turn affect other pockets of people elsewhere and it will flare up and it will keep on flaring. I suppose uh, one way is to stop all international travel, but that's not really happening now. So many people I know are traveling internationally and taking that risk. So at the end of the day, you have to watch out for yourself. It's a terrible thing. It's self-interest, isn't it? Self-interest yeah. first. I don't want to catch the thing. So <laughs> I think that's the advice here. Don't worry about infecting others. Worry about getting infected, no? Correct. Lack, uh, uh, and a big revelation in this pandemic was uh, lack of common sense. Nobody wanted to think. Just everybody was, uh, was just, uh, what do you say? They were uh, being, uh, thinking that they are being cornered. They are being, uh, it was such a, a depressing situation that they bought in. Why they can't just make it a regular part of your life? Now, the surges that you're talking of is because work from home has finished and people are going out in the offices. So that kind of surge will come in. But yeah. uh, um, uh, to see and to believe that uh, this is going to be over is a false, uh, false uh, notion. It's not, we have to live with it, Jay. If you, if you decide that it's something like the flu and like you're putting on your mufflers and your gloves before you're going out in the cold weather, let's do that and have a mask and make it part of your routine. Nothing will happen, you know? But if you make it um, burdening to put a mask and everything, it's going to continue. It's really going to continue. Yeah, well, we and have to I... check back. We have to check back <laughs> with you and see if this plays out that way. And um, I, I hope you're going to write another book to update. Let me see the cover of your book. I want to see that one more time. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, yeah, there it is. Raging COVID-19 pandemic. That's a couple of years ago you wrote that book. Things are <laughs> so uh, I, I'd like to see the sequel, you know, um, oh. or at least talk about it with you, Rupmati. So let's plan on getting together and, and uh, following up on this as time goes by, because no matter what happens politically, even the climate change, no matter what happens in Ukraine, this is with us and we better pay attention to it. Correct, correct. Now, Ukraine is affecting us because if their wheat doesn't reach us, our prices are going to rise. So you have this effect. Anything happens in the world, it's your house. The world is your house. It, it is going to affect you. So wheat prices are going to affect us. In the same way, some mutation that happens in another continent is going to affect us. Whether we take four booster doses, whether we take seven booster doses, we have to understand <laughs> that we live together as a family. and. Uh, 
So bringing everybody under protection is a priority for each and every citizen as it is for each and every government. Yes, so well we, have to, <laughs> we have to work together in this. Let's well fight put. together. <laughs> uh, Rupmani Khandakar, I so enjoy talking with you. We'll see you again soon. Aloha. Thank you so much. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.